button. Here's the one lots of you have been waiting for. We are playing with the smelter here. Dad's over there running one of the previous loads. We are about to smelt the blue chip mine load, the 162, 188, the, the good stuff from the blue chip mine that we recovered, where we blasted out that quartz seam, we ran it through the icon, the crushers, the icon. We got the good stuff. We processed the good stuff. We're about to smelt the good stuff. Dad's got it all mixed up over there all ready to go with its fluxes and everything. Uh, as soon as the previous load is done in the smelter, we're gonna toss it in, we're gonna smelt it out and cupel it and see what kind of values are in that seam. We're hoping for something good. Hope you enjoy. If you didn't see the video of where we um, blasted out this seam or uh, crushed it, I'll put links here in this video to those two videos so you can go back and watch us collecting this material and processing it. Uh, when we processed this, we didn't take out any of the gold. We left it all in the concentrates so that when we uh, go and smelt this, everything is there. Everything that was in that, those four or five buckets of good cons are in that little glass bowl with the fluxes, with the little tharge, with the sodium carbonate, borax, silica. Oh, there's one more thing I'm missing right now. All the flux components in there ready to absorb all the crap and leave us just the gold. Should get a nice bead. I'm hoping between one and two gram bead. A two gram bead would be awesome at this point. How long do we have to wait before we can do this? Eight minutes. Eight more minutes? Seven more. Seven more minutes. Seven more minutes we can get the last load out of the smelter and we can put the good stuff in. Okay, Dad is now just getting things ready here. He's reassembling the kiln after the last pour. I'm putting my goods in. You'll put the goods in while it's still open? Yep. Here's the important stuff. Oh, ho, 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 there's the good stuff. Okay, I'm going to preheat the lid off. Preheat with the lid off? Yep. Okay, and I think we're ready to go. Safety glasses on, Dad? Yeah, I'm looking for my glove. Actually, there it is. That I just took off. And that go whoop in my eye. There we go. And it is starting to heat. The good stuff is starting to warm up. This is where we get excited. And we hope we have the good, good stuff. Dad's playing with his last smelt. So Dad's playing with his last smelt, which just exploded on him. Beside him. Now the smelting process here takes about 40 minutes to do, so it's going to be long and boring. We're not going to put that all in video. While we are waiting, I uh, need to thank Dave at 911 Metallurgist and Pat at Quick Kiln for supplying us with the KK8 Quick Kiln for smelting and also the Cupelling Kiln 
for compelling afterwards. Uh, because of them, we're able to play with this whole smelting thing and recover our gold from our cons nicely. Thanks, guys. This has been a lot of fun. How's it going in there, Dad? Heating up nicely? He's heating it slow with the top off because we have a large load in there and we want to make sure it doesn't boil over. We've had a few boil over and it's a long process to rebuild the kiln when you do that. And we're ready to pour! After you pour, pour the, put the crucible back in the furnace. Are you just melting or are you smelting? We're smelting. Smelting. Let's stand back a little bit because you don't have any projectors. Exactly. Yeah, uh -huh, another overflow. We're all clean inside. Just like, just like that. Just like that. Okay, we have the trill all ready to go. There it is right there. Beautiful little chunk of lead. And lots and lots and lots of gold in there. We have it all ready to go. The Coupel kiln is nice and hot from the last run. So we are going to put the prill into a fresh Coupel. It's already in there. Fresh Coupel is in there. Center it nicely. There we go. We're going to start it heating up. And let's hope for two grams of gold. That's our hope. So the cupella is just humming away quite nicely right now. It's a little too hot. I just turned down the torches. Don't want to over push it right now. Going quite nicely. Hopefully when it's done, we have somewhere between one and two grams of gold. That would be ideal. And we can do our calculations backwards and figure out how much gold was in that rock that we recovered. Shake at the table. Now we have to make a quick modification or a repair to the propelling kiln. So if Pat from uh, Quick Kiln is looking, he's wondering what we've done to his poor little propel kiln. Well, we kind of screwed up the top ring, and we had one of the propels bit really badly without us knowing it, and we cooked it real hard with lead all over it, and we messed it up. So we did a field fix and made our own top ring, which happens to be a lot taller than the original. That's what's in there right now. We will have to be talking with Pat and getting a new ring for the top of this. A proper ring. This works for now.
Let that cool for a second before we pop it out of there and weigh it and see what we got. We're not entirely sure why some of them blink bright when they go out and some of them just do that sort of hazy darkening. If they blink bright, they tend to go nice and shiny. If they go hazy like that, they have a, there's still a yellow shiny surface, but they're kind of rough. This will be a rough surface. filming. Yeah, you shake this thing constantly. <laughs> Okay, let's see how hard this one's attached. Sometimes they break off easy, sometimes they're really stuck on there. Oh. There it is. And we will weigh it. Bring the scale in. Find the tweezers. Oops, zero out that scale. Definitely not two grams. Let's hope it's at least one. Oh! <laughs> that close! Oh, hey, there we go! Oh, it's a gram. <laughs> There's our little bead. One gram of gold from 162 pounds of rock. A little bit of calculations here, and we will be able to tell you exactly how many grams per ton that seam had. 162? I thought it was 180. It was 188, but we did Same not eight. run that last bucket. Okay. So it's 166? 162. Did I say 166? 162. Okay, so we have... 1.0 grams divided by 162 pounds times 2,000 for a ton equals 12 grams per ton. 12 grams per ton. So there it is. One gram of gold out of 166 pounds of rock. Doesn't seem like very much, does it? But that does give us a lot of really good information. When I took a very small sample of high, high grade ore, I came out with one ounce per ton from this seam. Then we took a larger sample, uh, more of a cross section of the seam, that's this here, and we come out with 12 grams per ton, less than half, which makes sense because we aren't just taking the high grade stuff, we're taking it all at that point. Uh, so we are starting to get much better idea of the pay there, how much it's worth, what is in those veins. We can find sections up to an ounce per ton, but more of an average cross section, 12 grams per ton what it's looking like from the blue chip mine. But there's gold there and it's fun finding the free milled stuff, the visible gold on quartz for sure. I hope you've enjoyed this whole series on playing around with the blue chip mine. Please like this video of course, share it, leave a comment, tell us if you're as disappointed as I am at less gold or if you're still excited, which really it is still good gold so we should still be excited. A whole weekend. Was that? A whole weekend. A whole weekend? We still have all our fingerprints. Yes, we didn't burn ourselves once. We wore gloves when we were supposed to wear gloves. We wore eye protection when we were supposed to wear eye protection. And we most often wore the respirator when we were supposed to wear the respirator. Safety equipment. Very important. Anyhow, like the video, share it, comment. Thank you to my patrons one more time for supporting me in all this. And until the next video, which... Eh, Hopefully we'll be soon. We're packing up here now. Bye! Bye!
Bye. Bye. Bye.